is a 1977 General Electric model XB3161 BK. It's a 15 inch TV. It's currently uh, almost being done, uh, worked on. It has the, uh, the XB chassis. And um, this was actually a thrift store find, amazingly, considering you don't find CRT TVs that much in thrift stores. Um, when I got it, there was, uh, it worked, but uh, the brightness was like this. You could, couldn't even see it. It was like that, all the way up. First thing you'd probably think of is dirty pots, maybe. Um, because I would worked it back and forth, but it, you know, it just behaved weird. Um, so that's when I began to take it apart. Um, I'll get into all the details, uh, on the exterior later. But this is the back. Uh, it's been fully, chassis's been fully taken out. The chassis's been, uh, ran through the parts washer, all cleaned up. Picture tube test strong with 100% emissions. Now the problem uh, could have either been a dirty pot cleaned by, you know, I cleaned all three pots up front, actually all the pots in the TV. And it also could have probably been a, you know, the CRT socket needed reseated, very likely. Because this is the way it was behaving, it was like it wasn't getting enough, uh, uh, when you adjusted the brightness it wasn't doing much. But I uh, put it back together, it worked fine. Um, well, while I'm looking in here, I know this TV, I remember reading this particular TV started out in the late 60s, hence uh, why it looks, you know, the way, you know, a little dated in terms of the style of the CRT and stuff. It's uh, rather much more round than any most sets of that time, but I like that. And General Electrics are just weird like that. I like like when they do things like that. So this is like an older design, but it started off as a tube set with, oddly enough, an integrated circuit on it. I'll have to look up that particular set later. Um, but this is solid state. Um, I'll just go over all the controls and everything. VHF tuner, UHF tuner. Um, Vertical hold, vertical bright, or vertical size, horizontal hold. That potentiometer right there is your R, R, RF automatic gain control, which I adjusted. There's the speaker in the back down there, and as you can see, it has a date code. Pretty much everything on the date code has is like late um, 1977. That's dated uh, 77, uh, 40th week of 1977. There, and yeah, and. Um, I guess here's one thing I haven't done in a while we're going to do. Okay, we're going to check for... Uh, might as well get my high voltage probe out. It, it says it's um, supposed to be 14 kV non-adjustable, if you can see that sticker right there. Here's my high voltage probe. Do I'll just stick it in here. A little less, about 10, but it also varies depending on um, uh, picture. So I'm going to adjust the brightness and contrast, see what I get. Nope, it's staying a steady 10, no matter where I have the brightness and contrast set. But that 14 kV is the maximum it's allowed. And for a set this size, that's about right. So that and one last thing I'll note is this TV is as late as 1977 still has two wax capacitors in it one here and one there but it still works fine so I'm just gonna leave it alone and there's the back of it so now I'm gonna reassemble this TV it's because I'm actually I don't, uh, I don't even have an antenna on it. It's picking up great, so.
There it is as the XBA chassis. There's your serial number and other numbers on there. All the stickers on this thing are intact and in good shape for 40 years. Got the Sam's Photo Effect for it too, just because. I like looking at my TVs in detail. I thought for sure there's probably going to be a problem with the brightness, the way it was behaving, but nope. Good cleaning fixed it up. Alright, and here it is all assembled. Here's the back. Has a monopole antenna. And uh, for a quarter wavelength, it uh, should be about uh, 11 and some inches for UHF channel 19, which I broadcast on. Like I said, this thing's neat. It has all the stickers intact, except this one right here. But, you know, it's going to say manufactured November 1977, so we'll at least know that. Here's the sticker with model number and other information on it. Horizontal hold, vertical size, vertical hold. Did I say for horizontal hold? I don't know. I'm losing it here. Now, this little antenna set up here. I always thought GE did this weird. Uh, okay, if outdoor VHF antenna is used, disconnect white wire, connect gray wire to screw one, black wire to screw two, adjust pull for UHF, meaning shorten it. Okay, I'll explain what each of these wires do. This gray wire comes from the monopole antenna. This loop connects the other side of the UHF terminal, 300 ohm balance load, to this VHF terminal. The black wire is capacitively coupled to chassis ground with a ceramic disc capacitor. Uh, being a monopole, you have to provide a ground plane for it to work you know, to its uh, you know, efficiently um, and correctly. Um, but I always saw it was weird. I always saw these General Electric TVs with this white jumper wire. Some didn't have a little clamp holder on it, and they get lost. But I remember in the early 90s, my cousin, my aunt had a, it was given to my cousin eventually, that's why I said that, but a 20, it was like a 21-inch General Electric black and white performance television manufactured July of 1980. And uh, I wish I could have gotten it because when it broke in 1995, I was offered it to me. My dad wouldn't let me take it for some reason. So, um, But that said, it had the white wire too, but I have no clue what it was for because the antenna terminals were actually up top with next to the antenna, and they just ju it just looped around into it. But that's what that's for. But yeah, um, that's how that's set up. Let's flip this guy around. Here's the front, all polished up. Yep. I already have it tuned for uh, channel 19 UHF. They had a bunch of masking tape stuck to this when I got it. And uh, some of the glue residue discolored some things, but got a, got all the stickiness off, anyways. But I don't know where this TV came from. It was actually pretty clean when I got it, and uh, it was as I said it was odd. It was in the thrift store. Uh, if you do find modern TVs and or TVs in a thrift store, usually modern black plastic crap or silver plastic crap. This stood out. I'm like yoink, mine. <laughs> So, turn this guy on now. I actually let this TV run for quite a while, uh, like overnight. That's what I usually do when I fix a TV, let it run overnight, let it warm up, full temperature, just let it, ro let it go. Uh, what do we got wrong here? position the antenna better there we go but yeah that's a wireless broadcast right there on UHF so and has pretty good brightness very sharp picture uh, excellent focus uh, and what else I could say um, for the camera to pick it up I could probably turn the contrast all the way down do one of these deals here so it looks pretty good 
if it color if the camera it, any any weird after effects are doing weird things but other than that this picture is like absolutely perfect as you can see and it might help since I did some of my former videos I made a proper cut to length uh, antenna up here for uh, UHF channel 19 I think I did it for you know, it's, UHF 19 is about 500, 505 megahertz so yeah I mean it's not just I mean I got this TV on over here too so I can see what I was doing before I set it up that's that quasar that was outside for almost two years it looked like <laughs> even that TV's picture perfect so yeah and I always love these little TVs uh, General Electric's like my favorite brand um, Zenith being number one General Electric number two tied with RCA just GE always had such different like they, they, they would run models for decades they would um let's see and the fact you know like I said this TV still has wax capacitors in it they just did some weird things like that and just the styling and this GE I just I don't know I've always loved GE TVs since I was little because of that 20 inch 21 inch uh, performance television black and white uh, my aunt had I just became obsessed with these TVs also it's kind of unique how the uh, tuners below located below the um, CRT and all that here's what the audio sounds like I was the only person in the world who liked anchovies <laughs> not the greatest I guess that makes two of you maybe three this sounds like a standard portable TV. The best sounding portable TV I have is a is an it's like some generic brand called Milovac. The TV was made in Taiwan and has a Philips picture tube. I gotta clean that up and restore that one soon. It's an all tube set with like a four inch speaker, but that thing had hi fi audio. I'm talking bass and treble. That thing had some serious bass. But uh, that's, that's for another video and another restoration project I'll probably do soon. Because I'd love to see that TV per performing again. It just needs a good cleaning and probably some adjustments done to it. I never did anything to it since I had it. But yeah. So. That's it. Very nice TV. And I'll just has a very solid um, power switch, and I'm gonna keep recording because uh, this is one of those TVs that, after uh, being off for like uh, about 15 seconds or so, um, it, it, the the cathode still discharges, lights up with a little dot in the middle. Here it comes. It's not very bright, so it won't hurt the phosphors, and it remains that way for about a couple minutes, and it goes away. But even that 21 inch General Electric I had did the exact same thing, and it's always thought it was so cool. I, I just love stuff like this. See, it even uh, it'll flicker like that if it, when you hear the the discharge, you might like hear a snap in there, and it'll get bright for a second. <laughs> it's also variable with the brightness control too. See, watch. See, I can vary how bright it is and everything. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Click like, click subscribe.